Awesome. If anybody wants to share, if you saw anything opening up for yourself, then you can share. If you, I, I see a little bit of confusion. Are you guys confused about this topic or not? Or the question and the answers? Well, Lou and I, we talked about um, communicating. I think, you know, what you, because we're all different, we all have our own views. And sometimes what you might not delay to say or, you know, do your own way actually might be damaging to relationship like in your example you know just let's pick up your example if, mm -hmm. if i love meat yes and then suddenly you know you're not giving me you know just feeding me all these vegetarian meals and uh, you just decided and because i like the person you know i will tolerate it you know but at the same time i'll say gee i really want it you know that's that's kind of big deal for me so that will create, sooner or later might create a conflict because I've been tolerating so long and then finally I'll say, you know, that's, you know, really just, I'll go and eat it. I mean, you just eat your veggies, I'll go eat my steak. So maybe important, you know, here to communicate, these are kind of big changes. I mean, for somebody it may be a big change because it's changes of their lifestyle partially. And so I think, you know, here, it's important to communicate or you know think you know i think it's important for you kind of more veggies because they kind of they, they you know they well like you said meat sometimes make people aggressive too and then <laughs> i mean if, if, if you read you know part of the people become vegetarian because that helps to reduce that aggressiveness well just to go back i did communicate to my husband that i'm not going to eat me but he was not even in tune with his emotions and feelings how he feel about it he, because he was making kebabs on the weekends but then when he made that comment i connected to his soul how he really feels and how it made him feel so communication absolutely the key here 100% but you see how he communicated. Right. Yeah, the way to communicate, right. You can, and then we talked about, you can say it very soft, yeah. we can say it very firm, you know, that's the key. Yeah, the because way to. Here, we're gonna be going deeper into the conversation, how to achieve this kindness. Because if a man understand a woman's nature and he talks to her kindly, she taps into her consciousness and she sees where she done wrong. But if a man attacks her or constantly tells her what she's doing wrong, she's just battling him. Right. And so our goal as men and women to get to the nature of man, understanding the nature of man, and for a man to understand the nature of a woman. So we talk on the soul level because we are constantly in the head and head and soul is not the same thing at all. And that's where all the conflicts comes because we're living here. And that's why we're, I'm bringing the education and the knowledge of soul. And we're gonna actually tap into the rationale of that and the consciousness soon as well. But this is a really great comment, how he communicated with so much kindness that made me think all night. And then I realized, wow, he wants meat. I bet he misses all of my meat cooking. You know, and I just negotiated, can I cook lamb? Can I cook chicken? Can I cook pork for you? But no beef because I'm studying Vedic, Vedic knowledge and cow is sacred animal. It's the mother uh, in India and I cannot cook that. He's like, thank you. And he did not say anything that how he was miserable for four months without meat. It just there's so much kindness, right? And so thank you. Thank you, Dmitri. Anybody else? Yeah, uh -huh. I just was reminded uh, there is a scripture in the Bible that says uh, first first one is first Peter Peter three seven it says uh, men have to treat their wives as a weaker partner and in Russian language it says like uh, you know this vase that can be broken easily and the other place uh, I don't remember where is it but. It says, man, if you love yourself, you have to uh, love your wives and treat them well. Because if you will not do it, it means you don't love yourself. 
and it goes back both ways absolutely yeah, yeah. thank you thank you for that i appreciate it Katya. all right <clears throat> Now we're gonna go into the part where a woman goes against her nature and her nature again is feminine, uh, that she wants happiness, she wants love, she wants connections, she wants relationship, deep connection, right? And she goes against the soul and connection of this energy of love. Um, and what she is making a priority, the achievements, accomplishments, social status, work, community activity. Women have these desires too, by the way, but it locates on the second place, not the first one. Do you go, do you remember as we went through the three fundamentals? The first, we all born for desire, desire of love and happiness, right? The second one, to achieve success, conquering work, having the victory and the third desire to live but you have to understand that for a woman this desire for success locates on the second place and if a woman makes that a priority the success a priority then she loses herself and her um, ability to achieve love and happiness is impossible now, this is very important, guys. If you don't understand, you got to ask me a question. Because this is the fundamentals again. More so if you want to clarify success, because uh -huh. success could be, you know, success in a relationship. So what are you specifically <laughs> meaning? Like success? Uh -huh. No, or... very good. Very okay. good. Thank you. Thank you, Aline. Because success, we're talking about success of work, success of career, success of growth, financial success, all of that is secondary. For a woman, number one should be the love and happiness. If it's reverse, what will happen? She will be accomplished outside and she will be empty in the inside. For men, it's the opposite. But for us, if we are making the success, career, and work a priority, we will achieve success outside of us. But internally, we will feel empty. And so, um, <clears throat> and so inside, she's not going to feel happiness. She will feel empty because foundation is broken. The feminine foundation, her nature feminine nature is broken. And now I have to admit, so for 19 years, as I was very successful in my practice, well, not first couple of years, but then quickly I start to become more and more successful. I just couldn't get why in the inside, I was feeling empty. No matter how much success, no matter how much money I was making, I was not feeling fulfilled. And I will be honest with you, that's why I had to build wells in Africa, help elephants in Africa, help even more lions and children and do all kinds of nonprofit work in order to bring the harmony because inside I felt empty. Does anybody wants to share that you're very successful, you are driven outside, paying so much attention on the outside of the success, but not really feeling the fulfillment and happiness and love in the inside. Does anybody wants to share that? It doesn't sound like I, I and Ayurveda are giving some kind of, you know, strange distinctions. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Does anybody wants to share who's connecting to that? Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to share. Um, I, I would I would definitely agree uh, with your with your comments in Arveta in, in that aspect. And you know, my previous I just switched positions companies uh, two months ago, and I've already seen a huge shift in in my life. And it's 
you know, that drive for success in the previous position. And, and we all want to be successful, right, in, in those various ways, but it consumes you and it's a more masculine energy, the more empty and less feminine you feel, which leaves you with a tough aura <laughs> versus a welcoming one. So mm. those are my comments. Thank you. Really great, Brady. I appreciate that. All right, then we're going to move on. Now, dear men, if you want to have a relationship with women, because it is impossible to live without women. <laughs> I mean, it is possible, but it will be a very mediocrity life. Uh, nothing meaningful, because only women give love. To have a relationship with women is also very dangerous. Yeah. If some men had experience with women, they realized that it's very dangerous practice because women's psyche made up a very high desire to have harmony, gentleness, understanding. And it's important, men, please listen to this. It's very important that this desire has enormous power. Then men's, a woman is waiting from her man to feel happiness. And a woman who is very emotional, gentle, soft, who is waiting for harm, harmony and for everything to be good and to have to understand that what's good for you and what's good for her is two different things. So you have to ask her and understand her, how she perceives love because each woman perceives love and happiness absolutely differently. And women, like any other humans, have egocentric perception when it comes to this view. And she does not really care what you think about what good relationship should be from your point of view. And with this woman who is very sensitive by nature, fragile, who really um, wants the softness, uh, love and harmony if you become rigid strong rational but at the same time hardly understanding a woman it's going to be tough because how you behave with her how her emotions and feelings work you decide to start having a relationship with her and while she loves you and you have strong feelings for her and everything is going well then it's easy really easy to love her and love makes everything um go smooth and harmonized and everything just goes really well love puts everything in place where it belongs no matter what he or she does think it doesn't matter because love makes it things very easy but when the potential of the feeling of love starts to go down and woman starts to understand that I don't really agree with how he's treating me. She starts to tell him, talk to me softer, talk to me gentler, talk to me, me with kindness, talk to me like this. A man starts to feel pressure because he doesn't know how to treat her with kindness, how to be gentle with her because she becomes unpredictable. For example, uh, a woman says, take me tomorrow to dinner. So a man goes to work. He search for the restaurant, for a really good restaurant, and comes home and tells her, let's go to dinner. She looks at him and says, I don't want to go to dinner. You can go to dinner yourself. And he thinks, well, if she wanted to go to dinner, that means she must wanted to go to dinner today even more. Why is she telling me she doesn't want to go to dinner? And he's really confused. And now I would like for you to think again and tell me why is she upset with him? So she took initiative. That was her initiative. But when he said, let's go to dinner, he kind of took it from her now making, um, she, he should say, you know, uh, 
everything is ready kind of let in you know the, kind of lead her way otherwise when he mentioned that let's go for dinner it kind of that was his decision to invite her versus she offered in initial you know initially Mitri, it's even simpler than that it goes back to the same thing that he she wants him to say honey you wanted to go to dinner i found us a restaurant let's go to this restaurant she wants him to be this gentle and soft and talk to her like that like girls talk to each other she wants him to do this honey i got us a restaurant a reservation let's go and he comes home and says let's go to dinner it's same thing get up it's 10 a.m and she's again shut down and what she does she's like go to dinner yourself and she goes upstairs and watches tv does she want to watch tv no or she goes downstairs to eat ice cream no because now she is eating or watching TV, suppressing her pain because he was not soft and gentle to her. Ladies, do you agree? Oh, I completely relate. I'm already getting some memories in my head <laughs> coming back. Yes, yes, yes. Because we want this softness, we want this gentleness, we want this kind approach, which again, to a man is very hard because men are going into logic. She should have said it, I should have said it, but it's very simple. She wants kindness. Her soul wants kindness. Gentle and kind approach. <coughs> and a man thinks of a woman. I live with this creature at home that has no logic, no rationale. Yesterday, she wanted to go to dinner. I spent hours searching for a restaurant. Today, I'm telling her, let's go to dinner. And she says she doesn't want to. He doesn't get her. He thinks she's really irrational, not logical, really strange creature. And she immediately feels hurt, feels hurt because he did not just said it in the language that she wanted really gently. So now he gets frustrated and says, You told me yesterday you want to go to a new restaurant for a dinner. I made us reservation with frustration. And she replies, yesterday I say I wanted to go. Today, I don't want to go. And that's how every argument similar to that starts at home from little pity things like that because a man doesn't understand her feminine nature. We'll talk about soon what women don't understand about men, but right now would like for men to start tapping into how they don't understand a woman's nature, that she wants the connection, she wants happiness, she wants love, and she wants gentle approach. So would you like me to break you into a groups once again so you can tap into that and share, or do we continue? Eileen, what do you think? I think Sherry could, yeah, if you guys have an example, even think about that could be, that could be helpful for everyone. Okay. Okay. Let's break into a groups. Two minutes share. What's opening up for you? Share the example. <clears throat> no, nobody. Eileen, you want to share? Only if you want to. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. <laughs> I forgot I had something to share. <laughs> uh, so what I was thinking about was, oh, I almost forgot. What was it? Oh, how that, let's take that same example that we just had of she wants to go to dinner. I'm going to plan dinner, make sure that she gets fed tonight as it's helpful for women to know how men think and that they're very A, B, C this way because they think, what? She asked for this. I give her this. Why is she not happy? But what's helped me with my husband too has been that I'm more specific in my sharing what I want so that he knows. We women love to assume that our man knows we want a romantic dinner. We want to feel the connection and we want a nice atmosphere in the restaurant and the, no they hear dinner I'll give her dinner that's it 
when I tell them, you know, I would love it if we go out and we feel, you know, we have another date night like old times and I feel pampered again and it's romantic. When I get a bit more detailed, then he's like, oh, okay, so I'll check this box and this box and this box and make sure it all happens. So I'm curious if men agree, if you guys that are in here, is that helpful? Dimitri, is that would be helpful? Yeah, it, it, it's helpful. Yeah, because like um, sometimes we um, we're very goal oriented. Kind of, you want dinner? Here's some food. You know, I mean, I'm just making it very simple, but that's what it is. But women want some additional attributes, so it should be again goes back to communication. It's so I give a hint sometimes, you know, and, and it's learning, it's a mutual learning process again. So don't kind of take it personal or get upset, help each other. So if you see, you know, I'm very straightforward, just, you know, dinner, okay, we go there. Tell, well, I like that place, but you know, I prefer this because it kind of has better lights, better, you know, kind of more intimate, this and that, you know, kind of lead. Mm. Helpful, very helpful. Thank you. Uh, can I add something? Yeah. Uh, with discussion uh, about that, we got a, to the good point with Dmitry that um, that position of the straight position uh, of a commander is uh, uh, creating the, the back uh, of a response, which is kind of not, not a feminine uh, matter. It's creating the same kind of uh, contra uh, contra uh, controversial, and, and uh, uh, like if man is uh, talking to woman in that level of um, masculine, it's create masculine back from women from a woman. So that's. Mm. That's very uh, like uh, for me. It was like like a, a, a light bulb, like ding. Mm, really and great. Vice versa. Mm, mm, mm. I wanted you. to share as well a little bit. Um, so uh, even years before, uh, I thought that it's better to be convenient to the society, and society wants for me to be like straight, to be like specific to be, uh, you know, to know what I want. And um, if uh, someone would speak to me like that before, I would say, yes, sir, I will do that. Let's go. And uh, he, maybe he would say, oh, that's convenient. And I thought, well, we're, going, we're having dinner, but uh, I would not, like, I would not know that days, those days that, it's not the way I want it to be. So, uh, so it's important to communicate your way, but uh, for men to understand, right? But you don't forget about yourself either. Really great, Kate. Yes, because man wants to make us happy, but we need to be in communication how. Really great, thank you. And so the example was the dinner and the restaurant. That's again, how 80% of the divorce happens. It starts with a little bitty things like this. And we think that the divorce happens because of major crisis. Most of the time, it's accumulation of those little misunderstanding. And they become bigger and bigger. And that's how man and the woman start to become uh, distant from each other emotionally because there is no connection, not understanding our feminine or masculine nature and so <clears throat> but for a man again to be kind is not natural to be gentle to a woman is not natural either so it's very hard because a man for example when he comes from work he's tired because he's been putting fires going back to my client who is an attorney he's putting 10 fires he comes home and sometimes he said i'm just sitting at home and i'm saying honey can you bring me dinner and she says, I am not your maid. Go eat, go cook dinner yourself. And man feels upset. In his mind, he thinks, I went to work. I was putting fires because men work not for themselves. They work for us. 
because they want to please us when they're buying the Ferraris, they're buying the houses, when they're buying the penthouses, when they're becoming the CEOs, when they're making the money and bonuses, they're all doing it for us women. And he thinks I was putting the fires. I am paying the bills. I just want to eat dinner because I'm tired. I have no energy to talk. And I say, honey, can you please give me a dinner? And she thinks he's not talking to me kindly. He couldn't even ask me kindly to bring him dinner. She's like, no, go eat dinner yourself. I'm not your mate. And women have a collective mind, meaning she went upstairs upset eating ice cream or TV. But a few hours later, she calls her girlfriend, can you believe this big bear, dumb whatever, said to me when he came home, make me a dinner in this tone. I'm not gonna cook anything. And she tells him, honey, don't worry, come over. I'm gonna cook us dinner. We're gonna chat, we're gonna talk. And now she has a support system, one girlfriend, second girlfriend. She's okay, she released it. What do you think a man can call his neighbor and say, hey, John, my wife is not cooking dinner for me. His friend Jeff not gonna say, oh, she didn't cook, come over, I'll cook you a steak. No, that doesn't happen because men have individualistic mindset. They're born to conquer and protect wife, kids, and etc. But women constantly <laughs> connect, connect to women. And so all her girlfriends will now hate him. And all men want it is her also understanding. <laughs> so do you see how, again, we're so different. And to a woman, it makes sense that when he comes home, that he can generate that energy for her because she'd been waiting all day for him. She'd been cooking, she put makeup and hair, she wants to connect with him because that's how she loves. And for a man, he's putting fires, he just wants 30 minutes of silence and dinner. To him, that's love. She fed me, I am tired, and then I can connect with you. <laughs> a different way of connecting, right? And so <clears throat> um, she's looking again at the world with the eyes of love, gentleness, and softness. She already can tell um, if you love her or not by the way you are speaking. Because the woman is born and at age one, a little girl can tell, even though she doesn't know how to speak, how her daddy's treating her, how's mommy treating her, how's daddy and mommy treating her. A one-year-old boy, he just wants to play dirt and with the cars and move action. Because again, the woman's nature from the very beginning, she's born very soft and very feminine. And at age five, she knows mommy loves daddy. Daddy better not talk to daddy when he comes home after work. If you ask a boy, a five-year-old, how does mommy and daddy feel about each other? He'll look at you and say, mama, can I go outside, play with boys? He doesn't get the relationship. It's a completely different way of looking at life. And so again, a woman is born with this feeling of connection and love and she's seeking love and she's uh, connecting all the time to women, um, to even men to understand how they think, how she can make the relationship deeper and meaningful. And men are not interested in that because they are born to conquer. And so by the way, if we even look at life, we have certain days a week that are feminine. We have certain numbers that are feminine and there's certain numbers that are masculine. For example, the feminine numbers are two, four, six, eight. Uh, and the masculine numbers are one, three, five, and seven. So for example, um, if you wanna do a surgery because a surgery is a masculine energy, you wanna do it, um, for example, on a day that the healing is better. So that has to be on the second, fourth, and sixth numbers because these are feminine numbers. And for example, 
if you want to close a deal because it's a masculine energy, you want to achieve success. Oh, by the way, let's talk about it. For example, <clears throat> success and luck, it's feminine energy. But achieving success is a masculine. Money itself is feminine. But working to get a money is masculine. And so if a woman, men don't understand that if you are treating woman with kindness, she is, she has this blessing that she's giving you that will translate that you at work got a bonus or you got at work advancement or you got a higher position because Harvard University in 1990s did an experiment. They said um, all of the CEOs and business owners and Fortune 500 uh, companies, please send us your pictures. And so they sent the pictures and they looked at the pictures. If a woman was mm, respecting, admiring, loving the husband, his facial expression was in, in such a kind of confidence, but a little smile, and every worker in his company felt the same way towards him, the same way the wife feels towards him. If wife hated him, was in an argument with him, was not happy with him, he was cruel, mean, and his facial expression was like this, and all the coworkers and all of the employees felt the same way towards him. But a woman doesn't control that feeling of blessing towards a, a husband. If she did, she would bless him, of course, to be successful and rich. She gives him this blessing only if, she, if he treated her with kindness and love. And when he treats her with kindness and love, she generates that, it's called on the Vedic um, knowledge, the thin layer. And this thin layer of blessing goes to husband and his success goes high. If he's mistreating, mistreating her and speaks to her, he's tough, rude, cold, and mean. She's cursing him. And his business goes down. He's not making money and everything goes down. It's all on a thin layer how a woman influences her husband. And so I would like for you to look at it from this way. A woman, a man is the strain. And a woman is a fuel. And if a woman, a, a man treats her with kindness, she gives him the fuel and he starts to move. This train becomes unstoppable and moves. He conquers, he achieves, he gets the victory because of who? of her. Every man needs a woman. She gives him the energy, the power, the influence to conquer, to move. But also a woman with just her one look can kill a man and stop a train and this train will not move at all. How she can do that? She can look at her husband and say, well, look at this neighbor, Jeff, and Jeff has a Down syndrome, let's say. He's just walking around, happy around subdivision, doing nothing. You know what? You lately reminding me more and more about Jeff. She said that, that's it. The train is stopped and train is not going to move. She just killed him. And women are not taking responsibility for this enormous power, huge power that they have. They're influencing and motivating men to either win or lose. I'll tell you even more. I had a girlfriend, not very close girlfriend, but I knew a woman years ago. She had five kids. 
And she would always call me kind of once a month and tell me, oh, my husband is in the construction. What a loser. We've been in America for 20 years and he's still in the construction. Her man had such a golden hands. He could make the most beautiful rail, the most beautiful house, how he would do the fire, uh, the stones around the fire uh, place. I mean, he did such a beautiful work, but she was thinking of him as a loser. And guess what? As she was thinking of him as a loser, he was charging only for a beautiful work that anybody would charge $20,000. She was, he was charging only a thousand or $2,000 and he was making only $6,000 per month. And who is responsible that they don't have this money and success at home? It's her, because she views him as a loser who is stupid, who doesn't know how to make something out of himself and make money. And if a woman looks at her husband and think, you're the future of CEO, you are the future inventor, then he becomes like Tesla himself that he becomes like Ferrari or Ford or president. He becomes unstoppable or Napoleon himself who conquered half of the world for Josephine. We have that power. And so I would like for you to get into the groups and share. Are you inspiring your man that he becomes unstoppable like train and he moves and he conquers? Or are you killing him off? Or are you chopping him off? You're doing something that you, what are your thoughts about your partner? And if your man share, how did you feel in the last relationship or current relationship? Is your woman uplifts you or she making you, making you feel like nothing? It's two minutes each. Thank you. Welcome back. Does anybody wants to share what you see for yourself? What's opening up? Anybody? I can share. Okay. Um, I can share the thing about this in, in a life. A woman also wants to be supported at your lecture all about the uh, but uh, to support a man, it means uh, what's going on? <laughs> I had the idea. And <laughs> it means uh, men to be one supported more in the words. Like we women have to tell him more how good men are and what he can achieve and everything you would do for him uh they do not remember that i know so many couples like uh, uh and men would ca completely complain that my wife used to always tell me you have to be this or that, you have to be good, but he would forget how much he gave to him, how she supported, uh, what, the, the, how she raised the kids. And he would forget about that work, what, and he remember only how she presented. Mm -hmm. Got you. Anna, and hold on, hold this on. is the thing. Uh, Anna, I hear you, but in uh, I would like for us to share, not friends, not family, we want to share ourselves. If you want to share yourself, that works because then we're bringing authenticity and vulnerability. As soon as we bring other people, the space becomes kind of, uh, <laughs> but I got, but I got. No, you. it's also part of my life, but just uh, men would uh, remember only what words been, have been told him uh -huh. but he will remember actions uh -huh. so this is what i want to say uh -huh. that I it's an, 
what I learned in, in a man's nature to forget, to forget what mm -hmm. has been done and remember only what. He, so what I want to say, right. man, so vulnerable in 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 for women words, but and he did, most of the men do not remember what. I got really it. has been done towards them. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I wonder if I say something. Hold, hold on, hold on, guys. Let me keep it in uh, sure. uh, directly because uh, we have little time and we need to move also to the men's part. But I want to address something. Men are vulnerable and they need us. And in one of my videos and in one of my lectures, I was sharing that men needs four things to be happy. It's actually much more, but on the fundamental levels, well, men need to be acknowledged. Men need to be appreciated. Men need to feel that you're proud of him. Um, I, can, I cannot think of an admiration. And so that needs to happen on a daily basis. And so, yes, man cannot remember all of the actions a woman done if he doesn't feel on a daily basis that she admires him, that she appreciates him, that she feels proud of him. And so, by the way, this appreciation and love needs to happen for a woman. And that's why we're talking about on the soul level. And that's why we're having actually this lecture, but yes. Uh, these little things matter on a daily basis. A man not going to be thinking, oh, my mother gave me a birth, or my mother taught me how to do math and Russian language and taught me homeschool. No, the day-to-day -day things really matters. What, who are we being on the soul level, not the head? Because we as a human beings want to always we, by the way, attach to feeling a certain way. And we are expecting a man to give us this love and happiness. Or a, woman ex uh, a man expects a woman to cook for him something without communication and without this kindness that comes from soul, we're gonna be bankrupt because every time we're expecting something and if we're not meeting that, we're not getting that, we will be upset. And that's why these lectures are for. It's a spiritual growth, right? And we're learning and we're expanding on our soul and understanding what men needs, what women needs, what our needs, right? So because we have little time, we have to move on. Eileen, I wanted you to share, but I wanted to get more done. So Anna, thank you. Thank you for your share. And let's move on. Sure. So now, um, we're gonna end the lecture right now on the woman's part, and we're gonna to move to men's. But I wanna move, uh, before I move to men's, I wanna share, because I had to had a lot to talk about it, but we don't have time. The main goal I wanna leave you with is on the soul level, we have a consciousness here. And God gave on the Vedic knowledge, it says that God gave his love the energy of love represents in a woman's body. It's part of him. And he gave everything, the light, the love, the harmony, the happiness, all the best he gave to women. If we're going to go into advanced Vedic knowledge, then it's actually his wife. The love that he radiates, it's also the wife of God. And that she sits in our women's soul. On the basic level, we want to understand it as a love of God. On the advanced level, if you're ready, you can think of it. It's God's wife. Now, if a man doesn't love a woman's nature, meaning his own wife or his own feeling of love, he will not ever give to a man happiness in the family life because that is in the soul level is his best thing that he gave to humanity the feeling of love and happiness and harmony he gave all the best to women 
And if a woman doesn't accept that she's born for happiness and love and she works and works hard, works hard, she's closing the path for her own happiness. And on that note, we're shifting now from women to men. Now, men are born when this soul feels like something was missing, that they didn't accomplish something, when they were lacking the knowledge, didn't know how to live properly, they were lost, uncertain, stuck, depressed, feeling um, unjustified, feeling down. They're choosing the body of man. The soul chooses the body of man to be born. And a man's body is meant for victory again, for knowledge, for askeza. Askeza in Sanskrit means that you can sit in a yoga pose or you can meditate or you can jump in the cold water or you can take the cold showers to win, to conquer your body, to win the challenges, to conquer the challenges for victory and succeed, succeed in life. And so success for all kinds of victory, power, wisdom, respect and leadership. That's why women are the best half of the world and the men are the most important part of the world because they are the responsible ones, needed, respectful, and most important part of humanity. So now you have to get best part of the world and the most important. Do you get how much we complete each other? Okay. And we are now talking about fundamentals of relationship between a man and a woman. A respect is the foundation of the love and harmony. If a person doesn't respect a woman's nature, he will never be happy in a family life, never. If a person doesn't respect a man's nature, and what is man's nature again? Victory, conquering, success, respect, patience, knowledge, wisdom, and they're older. Older meaning, here's God, here's mentor, spiritual teacher, here's men, they're older, and then there's woman, meaning older, wiser. We gotta respect that they're the leaders. Then we will never, if we don't respect the man's nature, we will be a loser. What do I mean by a loser? For a man, if he doesn't respect a man's nature, he will never succeed in life. And if a woman doesn't respect a man's nature, she will be alone. She will never have a man. She will never have a family life because she doesn't respect his nature. If a woman doesn't respect a woman's nature, she will never be beautiful. If she doesn't understand that women are born to be beautiful, for love, for happiness, she will never radiate the beauty. No matter how much makeup she will put on, she will never experience the beauty. And she will feel ashamed because she feels that no one needs her. If a man doesn't respect a woman's nature, he will be a single dog. He will not have happiness, no harmony, no love because men get love and happiness through kids and women. He cannot generate love and happiness by himself. It doesn't work. Um, that's why in order to figure out why we need a family, we need to learn and understand who is God and what is he doing? Because God manifests himself in a man and woman's existence. God manifests himself inside of our lives. God is working in a such a way that he shows up inside of our lives. For example, was, uh, he created a man. He created a woman. And a woman shows up in life bringing kindness, bringing beauty, bringing kindness, and she connects everyone and everything flows. Why do we need a man? He gave the wisdom, the leadership, the respect, the power, the conquering, all, all of the most important aspect of himself he gave to a man. <clears throat> God left himself the best again, the conquering, the challenges, the patience, the toughness, success, the leadership, and all of these are, not, are natural qualities of a man, being unstoppable, being bold, 
courageous, decision-making, conquering, and even willing to sacrifice himself. A woman will never sacrifice herself for a man, meaning she will give her life. A man can easily sacrifice his life for his wife and children if the situation shows up because they are born courageous. Simple things, if you don't respect a God's given natural ability of a woman and simply means, again, you don't respect a woman and if you don't respect her, her nature, you will never be happy. You will never be happy with her and you will never be happy at all because you need a woman to experience the happiness and love. Because the foundation of a woman is God. God lives in a woman's soul. Vedas are saying that a man should look and respect a woman as a woman who is God's wife. Who is God's wife? Every man is trying to achieve success, success of energy, victory, and to experience a feminine love and harmony because he needs a woman for that in order to balance him. And he needs the influence, luck and success. But luck and success and influence again is a woman's energy. Woman gives birth and woman gives this feminine energy so man can also succeed. A man can have luck and a man can have happiness. And all of that is a feminine energy. Any questions about that? Okay. Because a man cannot give life. By the way, life, birth, and death, even death is a feminine energy. <coughs> I have a question. So, how woman doesn't respect man's nature, like, but not saying some kind of words or, or by doing wrong stuff? Mm -hmm. I don't quite understand. Very good. For example, I want to share my personal example last week. Our son, like a typical kid. Uh, goes to a father and says, dad, can you buy me a toy? And dad says, no, we had a Christmas and New Year's Eve. I'll buy you a toy in a week. He thinks I didn't hear that. He comes to me, he's like, mom, I know you have $15. Can you buy me a toy? And I say, no, honey, because dad said no. Now, years ago, I probably would say, well, I want to make him happy. Let me go buy him a toy because I do have this $15, right? But then I don't respect his nature. That dad says no. We gotta respect what man is saying. For example, I'm saying, uh, Habi, can we go to Russia this summer and go on a trip on this river? Uh, because it's my dream for five years to go to Russia, show to Alyosha, Alexei, Russia. He's like, no, until this COVID situation, virus situation comes to normality, we're not gonna go. Everything in me feels like, oh, right? But man said no. No means no. I gotta respect that he is the decision maker, he is the leader, he is. Um, responsible for all of the finances, biggest decision, all of that. If that answers the question. Yeah. But or what if, for example, yeah. for example, also what one thing, um, Kate, if let's say I decide to go and work and make money and start making decisions like him, that's how I really disrespect him. That I fight, I argue, no, we're gonna go to Russia. No, it's gonna be okay with vaccines. No, uh, I'm making a money, I will take us. All of that masculine energy, meaning not respecting a leader in the house. 
even though sometimes I think he should make things differently. I do not argue. If I really think he's wrong, I will gently, softly gonna start talking to him about it, expressing my opinion, because it took me a year to convince uh, Vladimir to get a dog, a year. But I was gently, gently, gently talking to him. Could I have purchased the dog? Yes, but then I would go against him. And that's not respecting man's nature. Questions, that's a really good question. But what if he, um, he in his leadership position and he tells me, you go to work, you have to earn money. We need more money. I want to buy a house. You, I want you to help me. By, no, but by the way, this is how men is um, really hurting a woman. The worst thing a man can do is to tell a woman go to work. And so when a man doesn't have, you see a man, when he's in a masculine energy, he takes 100% responsibility over his wife and his kids. A responsible masculine man will never say to a woman, go to work. This is the worst thing a husband can say to a woman, to his wife. It's the same thing is as if a woman will say, no, I don't need you. I don't want to marry you. And I don't want to have kids with you. And your opinion doesn't matter to me. She puts him down. The same way a man can put a woman down and really disrespect her if he can say to her, oh, go to work so we can pay bills and you can help me. This man doesn't have understanding of a woman's nature. And he's jealous of a woman's nature. When a man is jealous of a woman's nature, he tells her go to work because he wants to get up whenever he wants to. Because if a woman sleeps an hour, two hours more, it's okay. If two people came tired from work, a man and a woman, a man should go and do the dishes or cook a dinner. That's how he's showing respect that he loves the woman. Because the woman is a weaker. He is here, she's here. And then she'll have so much kindness in her heart that she'll give him 1,000 more love and happiness in return. But when a man doesn't accept his power that he's born to win, to conquer, to succeed, and he wants the same thing from a woman, that's how she curses him because he doesn't understand her true nature and heart, that she's born for beauty, for love and harmony, happiness, connection, spirituality. You cannot listen to a man who says things like that. And how you do, you work on conquering your destiny and when you conquer your destiny, what will happen if you're gonna continue meditating or praying every moment, uh, every morning, after two or three months, you're gonna start slowly accepting him. And when you start to accepting him, you're tapping into his thin layer of soul because a man drives you crazy or a woman drives you crazy only because of your destiny that is behind of your soul here and you drive each other crazy and you attracted each other because you need to pass the exam. And after you continue praying some more, three months later, now it's been six months, you're not praying for him, you're just praying. You get to the point where you start to understand him. And when you get to understanding of him, that's when you influence and change him. And how can you influence and change him? Because you understand him, you're starting to get, wow. He tells me to go to work because in his heart, he feels weak. Because all of his childhood, his mother was telling him, 
you're the loser, you're the loser, you're not going to succeed, you're not going to achieve anything. And he feels insecurity and fear. And all of a sudden, you have so much understanding and compassion of him. You come to him and you start holding him, touching him, petting him and saying, you know what, honey, I believe in you 100% that you're going to achieve, that you going to conquer this job and that you're going to grow and your business going to grow. And that is my job as a wife, to trust in you that everything's going to work. But please, if you can, don't tell me anymore to go to work. And because you saying that with so much kindness, because in Vedic knowledge, there's a clarity when we sacrifice, when we sacrifice like that, you've been praying for him, not really saying, oh, husband, please give him more brains and compassion a lot. No, you're just praying. But you're praying in the background thinking of him and you and your relationship. You get to the point of, again, first, le first step is acceptance. Second, understanding. When you're understanding him, you have this thin layer of love and influence that's going to start changing him. And with his kind, because he's going to start feeling that influence, he'll look at you from a different space and get, wow, this is the best woman. How was I telling her for years to go to work? And now I'm not telling you hypothetical things because this is the same thing my husband and I worked through. I could not accept that he was making a low income. I couldn't accept that he was making slow decisions, moving slow, talking slow. After two years of our marriage, I was stuck making him wrong. And first when I was doing the prayer, I started to accept him. I woke up one morning and I looked at him like, wow, he has the brightest blue eyes that I had never really seen it from that space. And three, four months later of continuing the prayer, I saw him why he was uncertain in his career because of all of the mistreatment of his family, masculine women who were putting him, his brother and father down. And when I got to that acceptance, I started having so much compassion and I was just telling him every day how much I believe in him, how much he has everything to conquer. And his work started to go up and up and up and up and then he became a partner. And then he has his own business and he has more income, but it's all influence of a woman. But we cannot influence or change anyone until we get to the understanding of that person first acceptance second understanding and when the and we understand them we start to influence them and it doesn't matter whether it's mother father child health wife or husband boyfriend or girlfriend that's how much power we have within our soul connection to prayer or affirmations or meditation really good question Katya. Thank you. Ask me questions because if you're puzzled, I'm not clear, ask me. Or is there, or did I answer it? Yeah, okay. If you want success at work, you must respect courage, decision-making process, leadership, and courage in men. And that goes to both men and women. If you women feel like you're already happy in your family life, I don't know how you would want to succeed at work. But if you have that desire, all is missing is your respect towards a man's nature. And when you respect men's nature, that they're the leader, that they are the powerful and courageous ones. And when a man feel the same way towards the man's nature, they starting to climb the ladder. And that's where also the leadership and success also starts to come in. And then you will become priceless person at work. And it goes for both men and women. 
if you want happiness and success in, in love and relationship, respect women's nature that surrounds you. And then you will want, feel that your relationships start to feel closer. Your family life starts to feel happy. You feel real close connection. So there's this big difference between man's nature again and women's nature. Okay, ladies, now, if you see in your man 100% again, negative qualities and that he's dumb, he's stupid, he's loser, you are gonna make him 1000 times worse this man, meaning he will not succeed. You have to be responsible into the space. And if you think he is the greatest man that he will achieve anything, you will get this, you will get him the most powerful and he will climb the ladder. And I want you to visualize it this way. If you go in the chicken's home, you see a lot of chickens, they go, and the moment the rooster comes in, everybody like, one rooster, and there's thousands of chickens. And all chickens all of a sudden like, they start to become, gentle, quiet, because of one man, one rooster. Because men have this power, courage, victory, respect. There's leader in the rooster's house. Do you get this, ladies? That's how much we need men. And all of a sudden, all the chickens are quiet and they become feminine. They become gentle and feminine. That was a joke, by the way, and you're not laughing. <laughs> uh, but in the nature's world, it's, it's like that. Only one rooster can create harmony in the chicken's world and chicken's house. <coughs> so my dear friends, we must learn God's nature in a human woman or a man. We must learn to respect God's nature in a man and a woman. When you're approaching man, when you talk to a man, you must learn to respect a man. That's a prerequisite. You gotta respect his nature. You're talking to 1% of God himself. When you talk to him that he is God himself, that he is the father, he is the leader, he is respectful one, he is the decision-making one, he is the rational one, he is the conquering life. There's the sky arcan, he is here, he is power, power, courage, sacrifice himself. Then you're setting yourself up for happiness. Love and happiness. A man like that, when you respect him, will give you what you want, harmony and happiness. I wanna break you to the final exercise where I would like for you to talk. Is there resistance in you to accept that the man, even if it's just 1%, get out of this equality that we have to be 50-50, we are equal in the importance, absolutely. Women are the best part of the world. Men are the most important because they gotta win and conquer. But in the hierarchy of spirituality, men are actually here and we're here. Can you accept that and surrender that we have to respect them? And for a man, can you respect that the woman is the best part of our nature and that they need that gentleness? and that kind approach. I would like for you to share each two minutes. Welcome back. So who wants to share? What's opening up for you? Joanne? Yeah. So um, for me, I don't, I believe 
with men being up and women down, I, I, that's in, in the natural order. And when you flip that order, there's going to be a very big problem. Mm. You, you, can't, you can't flip it. It's, it's just the way it is. You accept it or you don't. And a lot of people have issues when they, they accept that order, there are problems that come out of it. But it's a natural order. It's been working for me. It still works for me. Mm. It's, you don't change it. It's just a natural, natural order. Mm. Before I even got married, my boss um, in Nigeria then actually told me, because he was a pastor before he passed, mm. if you change that order, it's the order of God. That's the way he wants it to be. The man should be up. The woman should be down. Mm. Flip that order. Everything about you changes and expose everything you ever dreamed to have. Mm. That's just what I wanted to say. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing. <sighs> Can I add something? Yes. Um, with this, um, the respect is creating uh, respect back over time or maybe. But if person feel that he has been respected his his nature, uh, he will be more uh, sensitive to other person and look uh, deeper. Just getting your yourself in a uh, other person's shoes. Absolutely, absolutely, yes how the core for us women is we are born for love and happiness. Men are born for respect. But the level of respect takes over the love and happiness. To them, they perceive love and happiness through respect. And I think, you know, that's kind of the key point. If you want to encourage men to succeed, do it on not try to diminish his abilities by, you know, comparison to a low, you know, level. So that's completely opposite. It brings opposite attraction. This is how you view it. You know, I'm not going to do anything. You know, this is how you, so do opposite actually, encourage. So do through encouragement, viewing it maybe a little bit higher than what, where he is, or at least at that level, but not comparing him to the down because, you know, everybody has his own opinion about himself. So when somebody views you know, somebody's down. It, it, it's not only about men and women, just like to everybody. If you want to achieve something, don't try to kind of put the person down. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Dmitri. Absolutely. Absolutely. And comparison is not good in the first place. <laughs> it's really trusting, trusting your man that he will achieve, that he will succeed, that he has everything to do it. And that's where we have a duty of women to give that to our men. So they can really feel that they can achieve anything. They need that confidence of a woman's confidence. That's what we give it to them. Inspire us to Inspire, succeed. Absolutely. Inspiration comes from us. Absolutely. And I have the question. Can a woman inspire a man if she is not uh, respect herself, uh, feminine energy in herself, because in, the, in our society, women can respect men's nature, but sometimes they are uh, ignoring their own woman's nature. Can women out of her like half woman's nature get these inspirations to men or, or she has to, get her own feminine energy and feminine nature like 100% to be able to inspire men. What do you think? Okay, my God, this is another such a beautiful uh, question. Unless a woman is in a feminine energy, how can she accept that she's born for love and happiness and beauty and harmony? How can she inspire a man to conquer and be the masculine if she doesn't accept that she's born for beauty and love and harmony? So when she does the spiritual work, she first comes to that she is God's love, that God's love is part of her or 
in an advanced Vedic knowledge is God's wife is in her, right? And so when she feels that she is a goddess of God's wife, she will get that. She doesn't need to work. That all she has is already there. She has all of the beauty and harmony and love and happiness that she's already perfect the way she is. And when she accepts that and surrenders to that, then she can give all of her femininity, her love and harmony and influence to man so that he can succeed and provide to her, for her and kids and himself. So that's a really great question. And that's why when we are doing, we have a group of conquering our destiny, this is how we work. Like I already win the exam, uh, passed the exam with my husband. Now, the reason why my health is not doing it because that's my second exam. And the more I'm praying, the more I'm doing the Pilates or yoga, the more I'm conquering that something is around my health is not working. We have different exams that we need to pass. And where you struggle the most, that's what your exam is. Clear? So if anybody wants to join our separate group, Conquering the Destiny, that's where we're daily doing either meditation, affirmation, or prayer every morning, and either walking, Pilates, or yoga, some kind of activity, because that is the part of conquering your destiny. So with that said, one other share here in the group. What are you taking from this lecture with you today home? What is something that you are left with that you wanted to think about, be with, grow, understand? What are you taking? Who wants to share? I'll share just three things. Um, I'm taking spirituality, femininity, and communication. Namaste. Thank you, Brittany. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Um, that what I'm taking from is uh, working on yourself, is creating the future uh, and respecting your nature, respecting your femininity. And uh, it creates a future uh, understanding uh, may, uh, masculine uh, in, in return and uh, just uh, creates a balance between those two natures and uh, with the one force uh, of harmony and happiness. Thank you, really, really great. Thank you, Adela. Mm. I am such a, I'm present to the space of co connection, spirituality, love, understanding the gift and the beauty of who we are and why we're here. And I wanna really thank you for the generous listening that you gave your participation, authentic, vulnerable participation. When we meet together on the 29th, thank you, we're gonna start this lecture from a men's um, main points. So because we're gonna start talking about from men's uh, point of view, why are they here? The lecture gonna be, it's gonna feel completely different. So even if you're here and if you're gonna come on the 29th, you're gonna discover much more for yourself. So I invite you to be there also on the 29th. And um, also Julia, who is in our group, gonna do either this or next week, a class of mandala. And it's really profoundly powerful class. If you can show up and the $20 from the class also gonna go to Pablo. And she inspired me to do mandalas almost, if not every day, every other day. It's such a relaxing 
feminine technique where you draw and you connect with divine and you get so many answers to all of your questions. So if you're available this or next week, she'll send you the dates, please join. And with that said, I wanna thank you ladies for the femininity, for the gentleness, for the kindness, the love, the happiness, the peace, the best part of the universe that you bring to you to us, to the group, because you're again, the best part of the world. Thank you for being with us. And to our masculine, powerful men who are the most important, respectful part of our humanity, who are here to bring the victory, bring the courage, sacrifice, the decision-making to us, to make our lives easier so we live, and we live from the space of love and happiness and just bring the beauty. So with that said, I wanna thank you all again for being here today, for making a difference for Pablo. I love you all and we'll see each other in two weeks or maybe sooner for Julia's mandala class. <laughs> and special thank you, Kate, for you, for your prayer. Really special thank for Eileen because without her, I wouldn't be able to do the Zoom because I am not good with technology and she just magically shows up and makes everything happen like miracle, easily like that. Oh my God, it's just so amazing to have all of you. <laughs> Eileen, thank you. Thank you, without you, this course wouldn't happen. This lecture wouldn't happen.